Welcome back, this is CBH4K, and I love XCOM. That's right, I love XCOM. Check out my playlists. There's like a ton of XCOM content on it. But, since XCOM 3 is a ways out, and since there was a sale upcoming, I was like, you know what? Let's do a quick list. So, here's five XCOM games in no particular order that you can get on Steam right now. First up is Phoenix Point. Now, Phoenix Point was originally uh, shown on my channel in like, 2020. Yeah, in the year 2020. And uh, this is basically Cthulhu XCOM, and it was done by the original creator, Julian Gullop, by Snapshot Games. It both developed and published the game. The gameplay is similar to that of the old school XCOM, with you having to supply things like ammo for your guns, grenades, Every time you use uh, ammo in the battlefield, uh, when you run out of ammo, you have to basically reload. And if you reload in XCOM, it's not a big deal. You, it's, you just hit reload. But here in Phoenix Point, you have a set amount of reloads you can do. And that depends on how much ammo you've put on your dudes in the first place. If you run out of ammo, then you would have to go back to your base and build some more ammo for your, your soldiers as well as grenades and med kits. So bear that in mind when you're, if you buy this game, you're going to have to be resupplying your troops. Also, a gun gets destroyed or a shield gets blown up, then you have to replace that as well. So it's a constant rebuilding and making new items. Now that can be fun because it adds a sense of uh, urgency and you have to be more careful with every action you perform. You can't just be uh, running around willy-nilly, you have to think about your moves, you have to think about your ammo. It adds a level of complexity, and I think people might really like that. The turn-based gameplay it uses a free aim system, which basically means you line up your shots. It adds a bit of uniqueness to the game. Also, you can multi-class your soldiers in this one. Some pros to this is that it's more complicated than the original, than at Firaxis XCOM. But it's also a con as it's much more complex. And it's this is already a complex game. Uh, XCOM is already a complex game. And if you add more complexity to it, it's kind of... Yeah, it, it makes things a little bit extra than you need them to be. Like, for instance, supplying equipment. Uh, sometimes you're going to forget. I know I did forget uh, a few times during my campaign. It can be a bit of a hassle at times. And you keep having to sacrifice resources over and over again and so you have to get more resources for it so it just becomes like a bit of a cycle so you're yeah it's it never really outpaces your resources your ammo consumption but uh be aware that you're gonna have to keep up with it and also diplomacy i actually like the diplomacy in the game where you have to uh, make sacrifices to get one faction to like you so this is both a pro and a con, as I was saying. This, like, the complexity is both good and bad. It depends on what you value. Um, and also, enemies mutate to match your strategies. So if you start using a lot of headshots, then the enemy will probably mutate to be a little bit strong towards headshots. The updates for this game were fairly frequent and seemed to have Solved well, some of their issues that were on that were prevalent in the launch, but they had their final one in July of this year, so don't expect any more official updates. But all is not lost, as it is mod supported on Steam. It's not so much on Epic Games, I don't think. So you're if you got on Epic Games, I'm so sorry, but you're probably not going to be able to do that. Do much with the mods. You might there might be a workaround. I don't know. You have to look into it. I would recommend this for people who like XCOM, but want it to be more complex. But I would also put a bit of a, a uh, asterisk bias and say, do not do your first playthrough with DLC enabled. Try and do it with vanilla only, and just sort of work from there. So you're not so you're not overwhelmed by this complexity because the DLC the DLC also adds a, a lot more complexity. It's like more things to it and it's better if you just come at it uh in a very simple manner so you can get used to the systems and then uh work from there up next is xenonauts 
It's developed and published by Golden Hawk Interactive. It's basically a remake of the older XCOM games with the TU system and all. And it has, much like Phoenix Point, the ammo and grenade system. But unlike Phoenix Point, you don't need to replenish it when you use it. It auto does that uh, for you. It's a, it's a nice little um, quality of life improvement. Uh, Air Combat is much more detailed than either the original or for access. It's probably the most detailed Air Combat system in all of these um, XCOM games or XCOM like games. But here's the thing. A lot, a lot of people... Well, well, we'll get to that later. I'll talk to you guys about that later. The pros of this game is it gives you a taste of the older XCOM titles, but with more of a modern feel to it with the quality of life updates. and Even a potato can play this game, so you don't really need that much... There's, there's not that much just demand on your systems to play this game, so... It's, uh, it's a good game for people who can't afford like a pricey PC at the moment. The cons, the air combat, while being more complex, it's also harder and most people have a tendency to, to skip it. Like I've seen a number of let's plays of this where people don't even do the air combat after a while, they just sort of skip it. It's, it's a bit of a chore and it's, and while it's, it is a good system, I, I feel like I can skip it, you know, I feel like the XCOM, the original XCOM Air Combat was probably a bit better because it was just very simple. Also, the graphics, or should I say the art style, the graphics aren't really, they don't really pop in my mind. It's just sort of like very bland looking. Things don't really stand out as much with the art style and the graphics. But for some people, uh, graphics and art style aren't really everything. There are no more updates for this game and it's pretty stable for the most part, but I would shop around for some mods. There's a few mods out there that are pretty good. I, also, uh, much like Phoenix Point, I would recommend this for people who love the XCOM formula but want more complexity added to it, but don't mind the graphics and the art style. Now for Battle Brothers. It's both developed and published by Overhype Studios. And it's best described as a medieval mercenary simulator. And it's the most apt way to describe it. Because you're basically going from town to town, taking contracts, uh, fighting battles, delivering various goods, uh, protecting caravans. Uh, also, you're hiring new mercenaries when, you're, when you inevitably lose them in combat. You're buying food and equipment. Food to feed the mercenaries and equipment to replace the, uh, well, let's be honest, you start out with very dingy equipment to begin with, and as time goes on, you get better equipment. The tactical combat takes place on a hex grid, much like Xenonauts has a very minimalist uh, graphics setup, but unlike Xenonauts, I love the art style more here. I also love the sound effects. The sound effects really make you feel like you're uh, slogging it. You're slugging it out in this big, ugly conflict. And your mercenaries company will grow in size. You will get up to 12 uh, mercenaries you can bring into combat with you. Plus, you can help arm other armies in battle. So it's it has a nice epic feel to it. So you're feel it feels like you're in the middle of a massive battle, in the middle of a brutal war or something like that. Uh, there's some very interesting in-game scenarios, and uh, I think they're gonna, probably going to add more in time. I don't know. I can't really like guarantee that. Now, pros, much like I said before, it's freeform than most of the games on this list, and you only lose the game when your mercs are completely wiped out. That means if every single one of your mercs get killed in combat, then you lose. But you can keep going even if you complete the end game scenarios, which is kind of interesting. So you can just keep going and playing, keep completing contracts, keep getting more money. And at the end of it, you get scored when you retire, you get scored or get wiped out. You get scored on how well you did and it shows you a different ending. So it's basically up to you when you want to end it. Uh, and I like that. That's pretty good. Cons. It is probably the hardest game on this list, and that is no exaggeration. 
If you don't think you can handle this, trust me. Do not play this game. It it is rough. It is super rough. Uh, updates happen when they bring out new DLC. When they drop new DLC, and that's pretty irregular. It happens maybe every year and a half, and maybe less, maybe more. I don't know. They don't really like communicate what they're working on, so I, I would just assume you would get it as it is. I would recommend this for people who would, are looking for a challenge, a very nasty challenge that will crush you. I was playing this for you know just for the uh, for the video. <laughs> this game destroyed me. I started a new campaign. This game destroyed me in a few a uh, few days. That has never happened to me before. That's not happened to me on XCOM or XCOM 2 is the highest difficulty. And you're probably thinking, oh, that's what you get for picking Battle Brothers on the high difficulty. No, no. I picked it on the middle difficulty. Think about that for a second. The middle difficulty destroyed me within a few days. That's how hard this game is. Be warned. Before we continue, I'd like to first say thank you for watching this video, and if you could hit the subscribe button, if you haven't already, and the like button as well, if you haven't done that as well. Now let's continue. Okay, now on to Wildermyth. It's published by World Walk Games and Whisper Games. And it's developed by World Walk Games as well. So how to describe Wildermyth? Okay, how about this? You know those choose your own adventure books, right? It's that, but it's in video game format. Now, you can take control on these heroes on scouting missions, on discovering uh, various things, and sometimes randomly, they will want to go on these side quests. And when they go on these side quests, they go on these little adventures, and they, you can take other characters with you. And... <laughs> It develops their character and it becomes a part of their character sheet. That's right, their character sheet. It becomes a part of their history in that world. It's actually relatively interesting to see how various uh, characters interact with each other, various char uh, character traits react with each other. You start by making your own character at the very beginning. You give them a name, you give them a face, you basically customize the traits and uh, personality and as the game progresses they start to develop rivalries with each other friendships with each other some become lovers some of them uh, during the course of the adventures uh, get married have children and uh, those children grow up and they become a part of your adventuring band so yeah it's it's a very deep one. Uh, whenever you do a huge victory on a completed chapter during one of the scenarios you can uh, pick from, you can also do a custom scenario. You get to have like a certain amount of peace time. Now this peace time varies and it depends on what you did during the campaign as for the length of this pause in aggression let's call it but once it's over your characters have aged uh and sometimes you get new characters added during these peace times because some of your characters will retire from adventuring life and while you're doing this your characters can build bridges and other defenses and and just change the map in varying ways now in combat the all there is no way to heal your troops not directly you can give them armor or temporary hp in battle but healing inside battle is not really possible it's mostly an outside battle thing you may think this is a bad thing but it actually adds a, dang, a level of danger and excitement to the fights that otherwise would be absent if you gave them a healing ability if you just gave them a healing class they would just be okay heal heal Heal. Heal some more. But because they don't, it gives a greater sense of urgency in each fight. Now, once you complete a scenario 
or count. Let's call them campaigns for going forward. Once you complete a campaign, you unlock the ability to make that character a legacy character, meaning they can go on and do other adventures. I wouldn't say this is the least XCOM esque, but it has enough elements of XCOM in it to me for me to say like, yes, this is still kind of an XCOM day game because there is permadeath here, and permadeath. You might think, oh, that's terrible. But if the character dies, you can memorialize them in that battle, or they can do a heroic last stand, or they can, or sometimes they can get away and just get badly scarred for the battle, and that changes the character forever. Other times they meet a magical cre creature in the forest and also changes them for forever, turning them into a wolf or something. The pros to this is that it has a ton of replayability. I would say the most replayability on the on this list, and that's saying something because there's a ton of replayability on this list. Uh, the game has also has multiplayer campaigns, so you can, so you and your friends can come along on adventures together, uh, build characters, have like a good old time with each other. I love the unique paper art style to this as well. Some might not like it, but I like it. So let's go into the cons even with all that being true eventually the game still starts to wear on you you'll still start to see like uh, a few cracks here and there but hopefully that's not going to spoil it for you because i have to say i highly recommend this game um this game is very stable and fun in its current form and it's still getting updates fairly regularly and these aren't small updates either these are big updates they had new uh unit enemy units and stuff like that it's the update cycle is pretty good i it's not like regularly learning like every month but it's probably every few months they come out with a new update and they're very vocal on steam so you'll be able to catch up on that uh if you ever wanted to play a D, &D game with your friends then who would be a good starter if not an absolute outright substitute so i would also recommend this game for people who love RPGs and have friends who love RPGs too and they want to experience it with them. Uh, and basically, I would, even by yourself, I would recommend this game. It's a solid one. Phantom Doctrine was published by Good Shepherd Entertainment and developed by Creative Forge Games. This is a Cold War spy XCOM game. Now, the strategic layer has you moving your agents from place to place with a chance of them being ambushed. As well as uh, other random events that happen, strategic layer, I find that interesting because you're you're actually trying to figure out where enemy bases are, where uh, enemy operations are happening right now that are basically going to foil your your progress on the mission map. So you're basically trying to outsmart. This one feels like you're really outsmart trying to outsmart the game's AI. It, it's much more. It's a much more dynamic campaign. You have to decipher documents on the investigation board to figure out uh, secrets that are within the documents. Like you have to decipher what, who the code names are, what the lo actual names of the locations, the actual names of the agents. Um, it's a it adds another layer to it. Missions are turn based, but with a twist. In general, it's a bad idea to be in combat. That's right, it is a bad idea because combat is very punishing. Uh, killing people adds heat to those characters, adds heat to your base, so you have to change their passports around and uh, you have to also change bases because if your base has too much heat, you will be, you will have to do a base defense to defend your base and protect your various things. And if your main character dies, you lose the game, it's game over. So, you're going to have to move your base again. So you're probably wondering, since it's a bad idea to do combat, what do you do instead? Well, in general, you want to use stealth. Now, stealth involves you using disguises, using sneak attacks, using uh, picking locks. Now, another thing uh, that's very unique for this game is that shots are not based on chance. Awareness basically adds a level of protection from your for your agents and for enemy agents as well so the higher awareness you have 
the less damage you take from shots, like sometimes you miss them outright, but when it reaches zero, you will take the full damage from every shot of every weapon. So keep your awareness high. Now let's go into the pros and the cons. I like this game, this game's pacing and the missions. You can never can tell if you're about to blow the whole mission because that guard turned the corner at a wrong time and just completely screwed up your plans. Now, let's go on to the cons. When an agent dies on a mission, they return to your hideout pretty much always. I haven't seen it work differently once. But if you mess up on some random events with your agents, they perma-die. So, it's a little bit inconsistent with that. I, I do remember this one story where I had this agent who... I had like a personal dealing that they had to go deal with, but I didn't have the money to help them properly. So I gave them a lesser amount. And because of that, they died straight up dead. Boom. Just gone. Now, sometimes these will, when these agents come back injured or whatever, there's a chance they might have been flipped and are now working against you. And this goes into another pro. Uh, you never can tell who's on your side even with your agents well there are ways of dealing with certain agents like there's one thing you can buy that called bigger shovels or something like that and i think in the interrogation room which you get later on now this is some this is a pretty polished game i haven't noticed any bugs or crashes with it but for the most part i haven't heard of an update for this game in uh years so on to the recommendations i would recommend this pe for people who like stealth and strategy and the turn base and who like less percentages mix with when they take a shot. So there are more XCOM like games out there and I might do another list that adds them there. And if you're interested in more like oh, yes, XCOM type games is set in the 40k universe then check out Mechanicus. I have a video right here and also I have a Chaos Gate playlist that should be coming up. And you can watch that too. And I will see you there.